Good morning. Hello, hello, tribe. Good to see everybody. If you can at all, please put on your uh, camera. We'd love to see you. We'd love to get a peek at your pretty face. So excited to see everybody today. We missed being with you. That was not fun. We were like, wow, it's not fun not being here on Saturday. So we're so glad to be back. Praise the Lord. All right. Look, I see Linda, Sandra. Yay. Hi, Paula. Hi, Eileen. Hello. Hello. Hi, Evelyn. Linda. Vivian. Hi, Caroline. Connie. Hello, Dakota. That's a cute picture, but I know you don't have the camera on it today. <laughs> All right, Wayna, if you can, that'd be awesome. We'd love to see you. But if not, we totally understand. Hi, Jamie. I see you there. I <laughs> got your name perfect. All right. Well, today, hi, Raquel. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we will what? We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. I'm happy to tell you, hi, Pat, that today is the first day on the second month on the Jewish calendar, the month of IR, which is the month of the, with associated with the tribe of Issachar. And Issachar was the tribe that was very aware of the times and the seasons. And I'm so aware this morning that God wants to reveal himself to each one personally in a personal way today, IR is associated with the tribe of Issachar, which is known for understanding times and seasons. And let me tell you this, not just knowing the times and seasons, but understanding the secrets. How many of you, the word says that the treasuries, he has treasures in darkness. He has hidden treasures in darkness. He has the secrets of God are revealed to the sons and the daughters. What, which sons and daughters, the ones that are going to lean in and are going to put their first love above everything else and lay down their own ideas, their own agendas and say, father, I want to hear from you. This is the month, um, is a month of transition. Okay. We just came out of Passover. It's a month of transition. That's going to lead us into Pentecost in the next month. So you have to understand what is happening. Why do we talk about the calendar, the Hebrew calendar? Okay. If any of you are here for the first time, put your name in the chat and let me know how you found tribe. But let's talk about that. Why do we talk about the Hebrew calendar? We make reference to it because the word is very clear when it tells us that we uh, we don't think how he thinks, right? We don't. We are not on his same level. We have to come up. What does the word say in Revelation? Come up here. Why come up here? Because we sometimes get um, engulfed and saturated with this Gregorian calendar and the way that we celebrate um, holidays and different things. We have to be aware. Hi, Maria, I see you there. We have to be aware of what is happening on the calendar of God, okay? So we just entered into this month. And so understanding that this is the time of connection and linking, those are the, that alphabet letter Vav that's in this word. It, that's what that word means. And we are in a month where transition can seem interesting, right? How many of you have had a child, right? You, when you're in transition, you're like, I know this is happening, but it's not really happening yet. And it's kind of hard. And I really want to get this over with, but I can't, I kind of got to be patient and wait till it's time to push, right? Well, transition is a time where we need to hear what is the spirit of God saying? What is he saying? And what are his secrets for you? And I believe today, as we've been studying through this house of Joseph, this double inheritance, what God has been pouring out, he wants to make himself known to every single one. And so I, I need you to prepare yourself to receive today in a way that if there's prayers that you have prayed, if there's things that you know that, that only you and God know, I believe he wants to come and reveal secrets to us. Sometimes it might not be the answers like we think, but he has secrets for you. He has secrets that he wants to reveal to you today in this month of transition. Now, this is, uh, today is the, what is today? 22nd. So uh, Psalm 39 was um, in the solid life reading plan today. And I just want to read one or two verses and highlight them before we get started. Again, if you're just joining us, welcome, welcome. We're so glad. Hi, Eunice, Marsha, Caroline. I see Susan. Yes, a lot of people joined. Yay. I'm glad to see your faces. 
Thank you for putting your cameras on. Welcome to Tribe. If it's your very first time, please put it in the chat. We, we go through afterwards and see all of the um, all of the comments. And so we want to make sure that we acknowledge you guys. Okay, so Psalm 139 is the, is the famous Psalm, <laughs> what I call. It's called God's perfect knowledge of man. Don't you love this? And it talks about God searching us and knowing us. Do you know today that he knows you? He sees you. He's very aware of all of the things going on on the inside of your heart. He even knows before you even speak a word exactly how you're going to say it. Isn't that awesome and scary all at the same time? <laughs> right? But he says, you comprehend my path and my lying down and you're acquainted with all my ways. And it goes on to say, there's not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You've hedged me behind and before, and your hand is laid upon me. And I, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me. Some of you have children. Some of you have loved ones, prodigals that are out there. Let me just declare they're part of your tribe. And you will, as you send the word forth today, we declare that your hand, Lord Jesus, will be on them, even in the uttermost parts of the sea. Your hand shall be on them. Even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines in the day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then it goes on to say, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Any of you feeling anxious? Any of you feeling overwhelmed? Here's what the Lord is saying. And see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I believe he is leading us this day in the way everlasting. So let's take a moment. I love just acknowledging these things. I love acknowledging his calendar. I love acknowledging his time because I don't want to be on my timeline. I want to be on his. I want to slide into his time uh, that he has planned. He's gone before us and he comes behind us and he hedges us in. And so we want to be smack dab right in the middle of his timeline, don't you? If again, if you're just joining us, Welcome to Tribe. So glad you all are here. It's really glad to see all of your, I'm really glad to see all of your faces. If it's your very, very first time, go ahead and put in the chat where you're joining us from and how you heard about us. Um, so we just wanna take a moment before we start and we wanna, we wanna ask Holy Spirit to just settle us. Sometimes getting on these calls, it's like running into a room, you know, and you're like, okay, I'm here, but let's settle to hear, if I want to hear secrets, I can't just run in and say, okay, what is it? I got to settle down. I got to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for knowing me. I love that Psalm 39. Thank you that you're so aware of every single one of our inward parts that you know from the time we wake up to the time we lay down, you know everything about us. But this day, you want to come and you want to bring your 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 plans, your secrets. You want to reveal these things to us this day. Wow. We, we love you, Lord Jesus. We declare that you are our banner of victory. We wave the banner of victory this day. He is Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, our banner of victory. And we lift up that flag of victory today. And we thank you, Jesus, that we are of the house of Joseph. We are receiving this double inheritance. We are crossing over. We are crossing over. We have crossed. We are in the land. We are in the place. We need your instruction. We need to hear from your lips this day how we're to maneuver in situations, how we're to maneuver in our own lives. And so we surrender. Can we just all put our hands up? Like, you know, if have you ever, this has never happened to me, but you know, where if you see in the movies where they say, okay, hands up, surrender. We surrender. Jesus, we surrender. We need you and we surrender to your will. We surrender to your way. 
We say that we don't want anything of ourselves. We lay aside every anxiety, every thought, every overwhelmed feeling over every disappointment, whatever it might be, we lay it aside and we choose to focus on you, Lord Jesus. We want to be, we want to be tethered to you tethered to you you know I, i'm getting this picture because i said about the policeman but what do they do if they are going to take you in they take you and they handcuff you now i'm not trying to be weird but i'm saying you're restrained why so we restrain our flesh today and we lay it aside and we say face down they say get down we get down we lower ourselves and we want to receive from you this day, Lord Jesus. I thank you that each one here has ears to hear what the spirit of the living God is saying to them this day. And we thank you, Father, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we thank you, Lord, that you said it's been given and granted to us to know the mysteries to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, God's way of doing things. That's in Matthew 13, 11. And we thank you that we are able to hear today. So open our ears, open our eyes of understanding. And we just stand in awe of your presence today. He is here, tribe. He is here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. And amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. It is good to have Kim and Hannah back. For those of you who don't know, last Saturday, the, they were out of town. So when she's saying it's good to be back, it's because she was not here. Neither was Hannah, but we survived, right? We did okay. And thanks to Denise, she also helped. But uh, it is good to see you all. Mm. You just, I already told Kim and Hannah as we hopped on. This morning, there is so much swirling inside. I just sense such a, a presence of God, like a pull. He's pulling on me to like relinquish. Can I just tell you just to relinquish? And so uh, I told her, I said, but it's okay. Cause I only have about like 2000 years of history that I want to try to get it through today. And of course I'll uh, get about two verses in. But instead, I'm just going to relinquish all over again. Father, I thank you that uh, priority to you is the hearts of the people. Priority is you, is every individual, every person. Not one of you is sidelined in the presence of God. Not one, every one of you. The Bible says that he leaves the 99 to go after the one. And, and so there's just such a sense of like this pull to like either try to commit to what I want to share here versus the, the, the one, which is never just the one. It's always multiple ones. God doesn't, I I've said this before. It's not, you're not involved in a big lot special where he bought up, um, you know, the lot. And so, okay, well, you know, God loves me. Jesus died, you know, cause he was dying for everybody. So like now I can just try to get in on the thing. No, no, no. In individually, precisely and specifically you, and so, Father, I thank you for your individuality, the way you individually love and are committed to every one of us. And so I thank you that by your spirit, you are able to move <laughs> upon every heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, Marsha, let me get my gallery view up here. Marsha, 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 Marsha. Okay, so for all the Brady Bunch people, you caught that. Uh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. While I was getting ready today, you just kept coming to mind. So, Father, I ask that you would speak as you would like to to Marsha. Lord, I don't have a preconceived notion, but no, no doubt you have her on your mind. So I thank you for what you're doing in Marsha. I thank you that that her faithfulness, her willingness to continue, to continue to move forward, to be kind when it didn't seem comfortable to be kind, to not, to not speak when she wasn't supposed to speak, but yet to speak when she was ought to. I pray that today you would begin, oh God, to move her forward. I thank you that you're moving obstacles out of her way, that you're making a way before her, that you're causing indeed for there to be honey in the rock. <laughs> I thank you that you're declaring that even her choices, even the life that she lives, even the desires of her heart, the things that she's involved in prophesy about her life. Yes, I thank you, God, that you're declaring this day. 
Marsha, I've made sweetness in the tough places. I'm bringing forth a sweetness in the places, relational sweetness with your children, with the death, the children's children beyond you. For a thousand generations, he says, I'll be faithful to you. Do, do not fear, do not worry, for I have made a plan for you. And where others would have felt like, or where even you can look at and say, man, that this doesn't look like a well-watered garden. This looks like a rocky place in my life. And why? Why is this still like, as Lord said, because it's in that rocky place that I'm going to bring forth honey. Because see, anybody, anyone can grow flowers in a, in a beautiful garden, but only God can bring forth what he wants to bring forth in places that it should not be. See, God's not trying to make you like everyone else. Okay, so now I'm moving from Marsha into all of you. So get, get on here. God's not just He's trying to show you the specific nature of his words, but yet the durable nature of his spirit. See, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And so he's saying, I'm not finished with you all. And so every one of you, he's saying, look at that rocky place. I want you to look at that rocky place. I want you to look at that area that looks like rubble and rocks and ruin. And I want you to begin to know that it has to be this way because I am the Lord, your God. Susan, I am the Lord, your God. It needs to look this way because otherwise you're just like everyone else. You made it work. You had a good life. You had a good situation. Anybody can do that. Listen, God is not coming along to make your life look good based on the world standards. He's coming to bring you a testimony. Our lives are testimonies. We are the rocky place. And God is bringing forth goodness. I keep thinking of, uh, I wish I would have taken a picture. Maybe Charlie could take a picture if it's still there and he can even send it over to Hannah. I don't know if it's relevant, but I keep, as I'm talking, thinking, of, we have, <laughs> Lord Jesus. So at the, in the front of our house, I don't own this house. This is a house that we rent. I say that to say, because I'm about to say there's a big crack in this. <laughs> there's this crack in the, the planter area out front by our, my gate. And it's, it's really a problem. Like every time anyone who knows if, if I have like my party last week for Eden, I am like, oh gosh, like I need a bunch of balloons over that crack. Like I just got to hide that crack. You know, it's so ugly. Right. And I was over there uh, this week looking at it and it's the weirdest thing. There's this plant, this tender, weak, little tendril of ivy, one little fresh, brand new piece coming out of that crack. It has come, it's growing out of there. This ugly plaster, my husband's walking by, if I want to see if it's still there. It's like, um, ugly but I, I keep saying uh, the Lord's now ministering to me. Come on. He's like, yeah, it's ugly, but here you are able to use it. Come on. Anybody got some ugly areas? Not just, not, you're like, yeah, not just my gate. Listen, my gate ain't the ugliest thing going on in my life. My gate ain't the ugliest thing that I have seen and still see. And so let me just speak to the confusion and the disillusionment and the disappointment and tell you a little secret. You're right where you need to be. God is, this is, come on, we're a different people. Come on, we're a great people with great power. Who needs to be, who needs to have great power unless you have something you got to power through? Anybody have something that needs to be powered through? And some of you are like, oh, please don't tell me I got to power through something because I need to rest. I am tired of powering through life. Anybody, anyone, anyone just want to admit, like, I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to power through. Nope, just me. Let me tell you. Oh, there it is. There's, is it? Can you see it? Is that the here? Look at. I cover this when anyone comes to my house, but here I am putting it up like it's going to be on YouTube. Like, okay, so, so we need to show our ugly parts here. Look at this thing. It's just falling apart and it's getting worse. But do you see this thing is growing through there? Can you see the little tendrils? They're just brand new little leaves that have found their way through the rough place and are coming through. And I declare that life is pushing through your ugly places. Life is coming forth in your cracked places. Life is coming through in the places that's at the entry of my house. Let me tell you at the entry point, the, at the gates of your life, life is pushing through at the gates of your sons and daughters' lives. 
life is pushing through. It that thing is so tender. I could it, it it's flimsy. If I were to bend it, it would break. But somehow it is pushing through this hard place and it's finding its way. And it is causing an opening. It's causing the crumbling. I declare that the life that is pushing through in your cracked places, in your ugliest part that you hide, oh, that you put a bunch of balloons over when someone comes, because God forbid when they're walking, I'm like, no, I got to have something next when they're leaving. But we're not even going to be there. I don't care when they leave, they're going to see that. That's what, I, no, these are my words every time. I know we're not going to be there, but when they leave, their eyes are going to immediately go to this ugly part. And we hide, oh Lord, we hide our, these things. We hide our fear. We hide our disappointment. We hide our falsity with religious coverings. Oh Lord. And God is set because we don't, because we know what's going to happen. We're like, their eyes are going to immediately be diverted to my weakness. Oh, but I heard the Lord yesterday. Ooh. He said, I'm not looking for your strength. I'm not asking you to be strong for me. I'm not asking you to come to me with your strength. I'm not asking you to come to me with your skill. I'm not asking you to come to me with, I'm saying, come to me with your vulnerability. Come to me honest. This is what God wants from us. You know, the God is not, looking for your strength he is your strength you ain't got none so when we come together let me I, I feel like he's clarifying something here when we come together and you hear words of come on we're going forward we're go listen that's once we receive his strength and push forward let, we're stopping real quick before we start taking the the land to admit I have nothing. I am weak and beggarly without you, Jesus. He's not leaning on your education. He's not leaning on your friend group. He's not leaning on your, you know, material wealth. He's not leaning on your, you know, physical health. Okay, well, now that you've done all this, he's, and, and by the way, just so we can obliterate that garbage spirit of religion. Oh, I'm just so over it. Let me tell you something. He is not leaning on your good works. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So do not, I, I'm, listen, hear me. There's no condemnation in this because I'm, I'm preaching to myself. If no one will hear it and get honest, I will. Because I don't want, I don't want, to get to the end of this thing and realize that it was all a farce, that I was faking it. Listen, hear me. The only way to ensure that, the only way to ensure that is to be absolutely honest before God, vulnerable. And God is saying to you, you have permission to come to me weak and vulnerable and broken. In fact, this is the only way you can go to him. I'm telling you, when you go in, with this like, oh, Lord, and you know, and I, I got it, and, you, and I'm going to do this, and you know, because I did all this, and I read my Bible, all this. Let me tell you, filthy rags. And I don't know how many men are in this room, but I'm just going to say it. That, that it is understood that those filthy rags, that passage where it says that our righteousness is as filthy rags, it is understood in the Hebrew context to be like a woman's menstrual rag like filthy, like <laughs> too much. Here's too much. Let me just tell you. I mean, we're talking about the thing you hide the most, right? Like, come on. You don't want anyone to find that. You're like wrapping this thing to like a thousand times, shoving it under. Don't, don't, don't even leave it in the bathroom trash. I'm not, is this too much information? Don't care. You, if you can't handle it, don't. it, it's like the thing that if I got to, I will put it back. I will wrap it up, put it in my purse and take it home. Cause I don't want to leave it in your trash can because God forbid you see it or God forbid someone sees it or your dog pulls it out too far, too far. Hey, this thing that we, in the natural, we understand to hide at all costs. <laughs> We don't talk about, I know I'm talking about it publicly, but I, I, we don't talk about publicly. It would be inappropriate. Listen, this is the comparison with your righteousness, not your sin, 
Isn't that an irony? God's like, come to me with your sin. Come to me showing me what you got. But don't come to me with that filthy rag. This isn't condemnation. I need you to hear me because see, if we don't get that right, then we are playing a game. We are being drawn out by a spirit that fakes it. Now, I'm not saying you intend to fake it. I'm saying we get duped into faking it. I'm so concerned. I'm so concerned about people who somehow don't realize. They, they think that they're having connection with God because they're doing this and they're doing that. And they're doing, but I'm telling you, we have to test the spirits. Kim actually made reference to a, a verse in real quickly in her passing of what she was saying this morning, but she, she mentioned it. And I thought that's funny because I woke up with that verse, that verse in my head. So I, uh, I'm going to take us there. First John 4, 1 through 6. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Is, is, wait, excuse me. By this, you know the spirit of God. So it confesses Jesus has come in the flesh. And I want to talk about that in a second. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Goes on to say in verse five, they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Spirit of truth, spirit of error. And it's real easy to think, okay, so, you know, the real obvious, like, oh, look at the world and all this stuff that they do. Listen, this is not what this is talking about. He is talking to believers and he's warning them. Hey, test the spirit. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe everything that presents itself as, hey, do this. We got to test the spirit. We test the spirit by how it says test the spirits by understanding that every spirit that confesses Jesus came in the flesh is of God. Why is that important? And what does that look like? Well, over the years, it's taken on different looks for me, but I'm telling you, this is what it comes down to. How do I test the spirit? Jesus came in the flesh to die for all sin, okay, to carry it to carry it away because man and woman could never. And let me just tell you something. You still could never. So we don't get saved and then we could. Although, yes, lifestyle changes. Yes, major transformation in our life. And if there's no transformation happening in your life, if you're not going from glory to glory, meaning freedom to freedom on a journey, then you possibly have not encountered God at all. This is my concern, that there's a lot of people living, thinking they already have the truth. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The greatest hindrance to the truth is thinking you already have it. Oh, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Yeah. But not living a transformed life. You don't have Christ. He's not Lord. Come on. Kingship is everything. Kingship is everything. God wants to confront areas of our life where we're still operating out of an antichrist spirit. For clarification, I know when you hear antichrist, many people only 
think of like the, at the end of the days, there'll be the Antichrist will rise and all this will happen. And yes, he will. But you see in this passage in First John, it says, every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. So there's already a spirit of the Antichrist moving, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So this is saying, even back when this was written, that there was already a, an Antichrist spirit about, and let me just clarify this. For years, I only could see that as Antichrist, meaning um, against Christ, right? Like, so obviously opposed to God and, and Christ. But over the years, the Lord began to kind of show me something. Anybody ever had a, like an antipasta? Antipasta, it's a, you know, it's not against pasta. <laughs> it's instead of, right? Instead of. So anti has two meanings that this prefix, okay? It's either against or instead of. And we're so focused on the against. So we're looking, we can see the against. We're like, oh, we see this. You get news clips. Come on, you got religious people will point out this is going, oh, that is antichrist. I mean, I don't watch this stuff, but I know there was something at, I don't know, one of those award shows and the guy who like did this total demonic, um, you know, performance of like unholy or something. And boy, the, we all blew up and the whole world blew up about like, oh, this is, you know, demonic and the anti. So obviously, right? Against Christ. But I'm here to tell you, there's some instead of, there's some instead of Christ that I'm very concerned about. This is where the spirit of religion, when you hear that phrase, religion, I am not downing uh, anything that has to do with church. That's not what religion is. Religion is an instead of. The spirit of instead of, it's a form of the antichrist spirit. It tells you, you've already got it. You don't need to hear it. it you come into something like this and you're like, yeah, you already know. I know. Or you go to a verse, come on. It's not, and listen, we, we all, I'm telling you, all of us, this is not you, this is we. God wants to address that thing that tries to cut off, cut you off from the path and get you to start following this idea rather than his spirit. Our eyes have to be locked on him. So you think, because I go to church, that uh, you know, I'm good because I have it. You think that's enough. It's not enough. You think because I'm, you know, I go to tribe, you know, whatever. I don't know what it is for you. Oh, well, because this and because I'm married to this person or because I was on the track. Listen, we have to constantly reassess our location. And today God is saying, I want this thing. Uh, you, I want you aware. Another way to just understand this is when you come to God. However you come to God, does it have to be a certain way? Does it look a certain way? Is it just, come on, just, you know, like it's fake. I don't, forgive me. Can I just, I'm, I'm talking, I don't have the words to express. Like, I know when I'm like going to God with like, okay, Lord, like, and it feels just very, no, like raw, come on, get raw and vulnerable. I was, um, yesterday as I was getting ready, I, I shared this with, I think two people. Um, this song is just all over me. So can I give you a song that I'm just singing? I, you know, it's got me when I'm like, I, took my shower, my time where I spend with the Lord in preparation for here kind of includes that. And I usually have multiple worship songs playing. Like it's a, you know, there may be a theme, but <laughs> repeat the one song, like an hour. And it's still the only thing I want to listen to. I want to listen to it right now as I'm talking to you. And it's first things first by someone, by a group called consumed by fire. And it's just saying, I don't want to love what the world loves. I don't want to chase what the world chases. And, and yeah, we can all acknowledge that. But can I tell you that there is a version of Christianity that is really just a Christian version of the world? We need to know what those things are. We need to identify them. When we measure when we measure our Christianity by if this is happening and that's happening, listen, we've been in Joseph. Are we catching it yet? Betrayal, well, betrayal. If everybody loves me, then I'm, you know, I must be pleasing God. No. If everyone's on my side, well, I must be doing good. 
if everything's working out the way I think it ought to, then I'm, you know, good. No, listen, that life is pushing through your rocky areas. God wants to get to those areas. We want to deal with those things. Lord, I thank you that you are addressing the giant of falsity, the anti, the instead of, the instead of Christ. Everything that masquerades as an instead of right now in the name of Jesus, I call you out. I shine the light on you in every heart. Holy Spirit, identify it. Identify the areas where the enemy is maybe attempting just a little area where it wants to say, well, if this were, then that, that would. If you did this, every area right now, Lord, give no ground to the enemy. I thank you that you are good and you are faithful and your word is truth and you are who you say you are and you are taking us where you're taking us and you are not a man that you should lie. And Lord, I come against disappointment and apathy again. I come against that. Come on. Some of you are like, I cannot get up and fight. And God's saying, you know what? Just get vulnerable before me. That's how you fight. Your greatest weapon is his presence. Do not let the enemy keep you out from his presence through falsity, through thinking. Again, this isn't like, a falsity like you're trying to be fake. It's this, you don't even know. You don't even know. His presence is your greatest weapon. Get in there with all honesty. Remember, that is how we come to him. We came to him the first time with an awareness of our sin, an awareness of our need. God is like, I didn't change the, the game. Keep coming to me with that. Come to me with that and you'll come out with power. This is how you become a great people with great power. You know your weakness. You come before him in full vulnerability and authenticity. And then from there, you come out with his spirit. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Lord, I know that you know what you're saying. You know what you're doing. And you are loosing people from the shackles that and the false teaching that has told them that, hey, just, you know, do this, do this and look like this. And you'll, that you're okay. And eventually it'll all catch up. No, it won't get real before God, get real before God and get around real people who can handle it. And who will say, no, who told you that? Who said you have to put it together? Oh Lord, why, 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 why? Okay. So now this is coming up. You guys remember in, let's see, in the Palm Sunday, I think it's in the Palm Sunday account. Jesus will just Okay, do you remember that thing where Jesus comes up to this fig tree? He comes up to this fig tree to, it says, to get some, to see if there's fruit. There, it, it looks like there's leaves on it, so he comes to it, but there's no fruit. Comes to that, and then it says that, so he cursed this thing. Does anybody remember this story? He cursed the fig tree. He says, may there never be May, may there never be fruit on you. Like, like may it never happen. It's like, and this thing, and then he goes away. And I think it's the next day that the Peter or the, the disciples notice it. They're like, hey, that fig tree that you cursed yesterday is like, it's done. It's, come on, let's pull this up. Lord. Oh yeah. The Lord wants to pull the, um, he wants to deal with the fig, the fig tree. And I'm going to tell you what this represents in just one moment. Let's see. See, this is, I got other good notes we could have read. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, let's look at Mark 11. Mark 11. This is interesting because I, I was reading this uh, during the Palm Sunday season because this is during the Palm Sunday uh, week, like he's writing on the call, the, the cult, they answer, they want to let the people go. So let me just tell you. So Mark 11, I'm just going to go ahead and pick it up. Well, I'll just read the whole thing and see what God wants to do. I love when God decides he's going to take it. All right. So Mark 11, one, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. 
As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered, "Jesus had, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. See, when you answer the way God says, you get what you need. When he says, hey, do this and do that, and you do it, that it'll all work out. See, he, he told them, look, if someone asks you, say this, and, and that's exactly what happened. Someone needs to remember that. When something occurs, answer the way God says. When something occurs that doesn't seem like it's working, you say, it's all working out for my good. God always works it out for my good. Even when it don't look good. Come on, we need to learn to respond with the instructions God has given us. Jesus has given you all instructions on how to face your difficulties. Activate it. Activate it. And truly believe it. Like go to God in your heart. Like, oh, this feels crazy. But Lord, you said. So come on. It's an opportunity for you to show yourself. Your troubles are not your troubles. Your troubles are your opportunities your different see this is the problem we all want to run from the battle we all want to no not another thing listen i do too my flesh is like are you kidding me but the spirit of god in me is like yes there they are let's take this land all right uh so when they seven when they brought the cult to to jesus and threw their cloaks over it he sat on it and many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Come on, this is the whole uh, coming in, the king coming in. Come on, the king coming in. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Mark eleven eleven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So weird. He comes in. It's already late. Apparently things are not happening here. And then, then we get this. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for the figs. <laughs> then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Now, what's that all about? It says it wasn't even supposed to have fruit, right? Isn't that what it said? This is the NIV. And it says, seeing in the distance. So he sees it. He sees the leaves on it, goes to it. There's, he finds nothing but leaves. Why? Because it's not the season. It's not supposed to have fruit. But yet his response. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, so they could continue on, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, it, is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer? For all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Then the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this, began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, but because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Look, Rabbi, look. The fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that they will see it happen, it will happen. It will be done for them. Goes on to say whatever you ask in prayer. Let me tell you something. Where am I going with this? What happened there? What was the deal with that fig tree? Can I just share something? I, you know, this is something I've thought of for a long time. I don't know that I've ever come out with it. I don't think I have shared it. Publicly, but right now the Lord is bringing it up as I'm referring to this false front, this thinking I already have it, thinking I'm all set. Listen, we are always going to need a savior. We're going to constantly be in need. Jesus loves us the way we are. Us knowing our deep need always is going to keep you safe. It's going to keep you moving forward. You're never going to be done needing the blood to wash you. And this false front is what this is about. Where is the first mention of the fig tree? Genesis. 
I believe that Jesus was addressing something here. You remember that after Adam and Eve ate, this is a first sin situation. This is the fall of man situation. They ate of it and then they did what? They sewed fig leaves together because they were naked and they tried to cover themselves, right? Let me look at the exact. Yeah. I love this. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us to see. Help our eyes to be opened. They went, oh yeah, here we go. Genesis 3. What 3? Genesis 3. We'll pick it up at 7. So we know that Eve sees this. She gives it, she eats it. She gives it to her husband. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. They tried to cover themselves. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden, pool of day. So he comes, he's like, what's going on? He knows what's going on, <laughs> but he wants them. He wants to hear from them. What's going on? Do you know what's going on? What's happened? And so of course they say what happened. Ultimately, God Deals with it there, and this is what he ends up doing, though. In verse 21, it says, Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Listen to me. They took, they were naked. They took fig leaves and they covered themselves to hide their nakedness. Oh, Lord. But that was never going to be enough. So what did God have to do? He took an animal and he killed it. And he took the skin from that animal and he made them a covering, something that would be more effective, a better covering. We need his covering. Listen, Jesus is now seeing this fig tree. I believe this because this is like the most random little, like, why did he curse that tree? That tree was not supposed to be. I don't believe this had anything to do with the lack of fruit, whatever. It could be taught a lot of ways, but I'm telling you when I see that, I'm like, Jesus sees this and it reminds him of the inadequate covering that men and women use to cover their sin and shame. He knew he was about to go cover them forever. He would be that sacrifice. But it was going to cost, it was going to, bloodshed had to happen. That animal, God used that animal, he killed an animal to give them a covering that would protect them. An adequate covering. The only adequate covering for your inadequacies, for your sin, for the fall of mankind on you is Christ. We are clothed with salvation. The blood of Jesus is the cost. Every other thing that you use to cover up your inadequacy and your shame is like that fig tree. It's not going to be enough. And this is what God, this is what Jesus looks at. It. It's like, you're never going to be enough. And I believe that this is tucked in this weird little spot. Can I just say, remember, I just read that he was coming into town and then he comes into the temple and he starts doing what? Overthrowing the religious ways of the temple. Flipping tables, saying, this is not the way it's supposed to be. This ain't going to be enough. He's flipping it all over. He's confronting the outer because he understands this is not going to be enough. He says, you have made this a den of thieves. Anyways. Religious thinking, whatever it is, it looks a lot, it looks different. Some of you may feel like if I just read my Bible every day, if I just get to class, if I go to church, if I do this, and listen, you will never be able to cover yourself. I will never be able to cover myself. I will never get it all right. I will never be all that I need to be outside of 
the covering and the clothing of salvation. Last week, we talked about being clothed with salvation. We talked about Joseph. Listen, this covering cannot be removed from you. See that covering that, that even that prophetic picture in the garden from the beginning, that was like the things you sewed together are not going to hold. They're not going to protect you from the elements. They're not going to make you feel protected. They're not going to protect you. They're going to wither. They're going to die. They're going to fall apart. So let me make you something, but there's a cost to it. Even there, there had to be bloodshed. See, that was a prophetic picture of the truth that there would have to be bloodshed. You're covered, completely covered, protected because the blood of Jesus came. And listen, and even as I say that, some of you are like, well, duh, listen, no, hear me. Every part of your fiber of your, who you are in Christ needs to hear that the blood of Jesus, this is the power of the gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God, the power. You want power? I want power. And this is what God, oh, if only I'm getting this. I'm so grateful for this reminder. Monica, you want power? You want to see power? Then you keep aware that every day, all day, it's the covering of the blood of the lamb. It will never be because you learned so much. It will never be because you're feeling strong today. It will never be because, you know, finally that thing got resolved. It'll never be because, you know, finally your kids, you know, aren't on drugs or, or you're not addicted or you're out of that cycle. Listen, all those things are the fruitfulness of the life that God will bring you, but they will only come through Christ. Lord, I thank you that you are testing the spirits today, that you're causing each of us to test the spirits. Test the spirit. Lord, shut down every lie. I curse those fig leaves off of your life right now. I curse them and I say, may no one ever eat from you again. May you never feed off of feeling good because you made it look good on the outside. May you feed only on the fruit of the precious blood of Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord caused us to be able to enter the land. He said, you will never be able to enter that good land and be the great people with great power unless we have that down because there's no greatness outside of him. There's no great power outside of his spirit. Nothing, nothing good outside of him. And so in order for us to go in and possess the land that he has for us, which is what we're here, this is, <laughs> I'm like, Lord, where are we talking about possessing the land? Aren't we going in? Aren't we like the Joseph company that out of Egypt they came and then you use this great people, the house of Joseph to go in? He says, yeah, but you'll, you'll never go in with your fig leaves. Before we can go in and truly begin to possess the land that God has for us, we have to remove our fig leaves. So Father, I pray right now that you would cause us to shed the fig leaves, to even begin to recognize the fig leaves. I pray that this week that you would cause each person to begin to identify the fig leaves, the false coverings, the laughter. Sometimes we laugh and we make jokes to cover. Oh. Lord, I pray that every giant Lord, you said that watch the giants fall. And even right now, Lord said, the reason this is important is because behind the use of the fig leaf, the antichrist spirit, so, so casual, even as I'm calling it an, a, a, a fig, a sewing a fig leaf, it seems so um, non-threatening, right? Like, oh yeah, I should probably deal with that. Like it's a fig leaf, it's non-threatening. Let me tell you something. I see the Lord showing me. He said, the reason why this has to be dealt with is because the antichrist spirit, it's the instead of. 
I, the, before they had that, that tunic, the, the animal skin that God used to cover them, they had something else. It was the instead of. It was the antichrist spirit. Instead of. And God's like, the instead of will never work. The instead of will destroy you. It's the antichrist spirit. So it's quite dangerous. Yet it seems so safe. So small. Like, is it that big of a deal? Any falsity is extremely dangerous. And that does not mean that I'm saying, you know, be blabbing your fears and problems ever. I'm saying get real with God. He is looking for your vulnerability. He is not sick and tired of your weakness and your vulnerability. This is who he is. He's your father. Come to him with it. This is what he wants. He's saying, I want my people to come to me vulnerable. I want you to come and knowing your weakness and my strength will be made perfect in your weakness. Remember Paul, so it's like I had this thorn in my side and three times I prayed. Come on, Paul is asking this thing to be removed. And he even refers to it as a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. Like, come on, I've got this thing believed to be a physical malady in his body because um, it's saying in his flesh. But actually, you know, I'm just going to say the Lord is causing me to question anything I've been taught over the years. I need to find it in the scriptures See, because tradition's been handed down through religious things. So I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm just saying you better check it before I'm not allowed to preach it unless I've checked it. Because what did he say? Many false prophets have gone out into the world and the spirits have gone out. Then we've been taught things. Traditions, traditions, check them, hear from, find them in the scriptures. Make sure it's what God is saying, not just what you heard. See, you've got to read your Bible. You've got to know what God is saying. Otherwise, you'll be wearing a fig leaf and you don't even know it. Behind those, behind this Antichrist spirit stands the giants. You want to see giants fall? God's like, you're going to have to get humble before me because we're talking about the spirit of mammon. So we think we hide behind if our money situation is okay, then we're okay. We hide, okay, this, this success, okay? The world, the the uh, dream, the American dream, and if I own my home and I don't, all these things are fine. But you better make sure that it's not that spirit, that giant, that is trying to come in through that false front. If this is okay, I'm okay. You guys have, come on. Let me just say this: without some of the pain and persecution that you have in your life, you all wouldn't be here. Could anyone just admit that? Come on, let's just be real. Like, no, I would just be chilling. I'd be like, you know, on my yacht somewhere. <laughs> right? If I get a yacht, I promise to do tribe from it. As a testimony of his goodness. Not as a, because I have this, I've got it. No, no, no. Because let me tell you something. In my weakness, his strength is being made perfect. God is dealing with this weakness factor, not because he's trying to point out your weakness or help a few sisters out or brothers out who are feeling a little low. No, no, no. This is the power stance. Are you hearing me? There's no other power stance. Nothing said the money's going to fail. Heaven and earth is going to pass, but his word is going to stand forever. Lord, help me because I just don't think that I'm able to communicate the strength of what you're trying to say here. You want in you want access you want to be strong then you must be weak let the weak say i am strong this isn't like and, and forgive me because i know i probably taught it this way too hey you feel weak well no don't say that say you're strong no 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 let me just tell you something the weak let the weak say they're strong is a reality check on the truth the weak those who know that they're weak those who understand that go to Christ, admitting their weakness, knowing Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. And then that person receives from his spirit and therefore they come out strong. I say this and my husband is my witness that if you only knew that if you think that I come on strong, if, if it does not come from me. It's because I come to him so weak and broken. I'm like, again, Lord, again, God wants you to don't, he's never going to get tired of it. And someone is getting free from the mindset that says, God, I'm sorry, I'm so weak and I'm, I'm trying and I'm going to do better so I can come back to you strong. He don't want you to come back to him strong. He's not asking you to come back to him strong. He's asking you to come to him weak and he'll send you out strong. Did you hear that? 
Your strength is going outward from him, not inward toward him. It's coming from him and outward, out to your enemies, out to the spirit of mammon, out to the spirit of falsity, the antichrist spirit. You can't have me. You can't have me because I'm already a conquered city. Come on, fear. You have no place in me because I'm already a conquered city. G Joseph, we've been talking about Joseph. Joseph, come on. Go back to, we, we, we saw betrayed by his brothers. They wanted to kill him. They were going to kill him. And then they sold him into slavery. Sent to, sent to a nation as a slave, humiliated, shamed, betrayed, alone, shackled. All the things that happened there, we, you know, then he's, you know, okay, well, things are kind of working out as, you know, as a slave, as best a slave could, you know, best case slave scenario. Oh, don't be satisfied with the best case slave scenario anymore. There's so much more. Then that goes bad. Then he gets brought into, to, um, before Pharaoh made a ruler for the purposes of God. Eventually those same brothers come bowing before him because there's a famine in the land and they come showing, showing God's word will come to pass. Put in my glasses again. This is the second time I've done this live. All right. This is where I was going to start. I'm just going to look at a little bit here and see where else God wants to go. Listen, Jesus loves us so much. that he's going to keep bringing us back, keep re diverting us back to him. Him. He's who you need. He's who you want. And he wants you. Let's just take a peek here. Joseph's in Egypt. Yeah, we looked at that. All right, great. Basically, the brothers come. Uh, Joseph's running the show. The brothers come because there's uh, a famine. No one word. Remember that I said last year sometime, there was a word from Amos that a famine was coming. Thus says the Lord that a famine would come, but it would not be a famine for bread, but it would be a famine for hearing the word of the Lord. Hear me because this has been coming up all week again. The famine for hearing the word of the Lord is coming. I'm not saying that you're not going to hear scriptures quoted. I'm not going to say that you can't. I'm telling I'm starting to see this in a whole new way. We're going to have these false fronts. We're going to have people teaching us how to get a, a fig leaf. Uh, listen, you are never going to come here and have me teach you how to sew a fig leaf. I will not. And you need to realize because people, I'm not saying that people have ill will. I'm saying the spirit, that antichrist spirit is out there. It's moving. It's moving among believers. It's, it's moving among churches. It's moving among us to convince us that, oh, you're good. You got a, you're a little covered. And I'm here to tell you that covering isn't going to hold. And it's really not going to hold as the winds begin to blow. And the time, Christ alone, Christ alone. Listen. Programs are not going to save you. In this famine, you must have an ear that can hear the word of the Lord. You can. You are the people who can. I'm telling you, I'm prophesying to you that when the famine hits, you will be the Josephs. You will have the strategy. You will have the word. The famine hit. Okay. I'm just going to pick this up. Genesis 41. Let's just pick it up at 46. You guys have the general idea of the story. And you can go back and read it too. Oh, no, I love this. So let's read this. 
44. Chapter 41. 44. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphna Panea, and he gave him as a wife, Aseneth, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. I looked up last week, I don't know, I probably have it here somewhere, but this, the name that, you know what the name that Pharaoh gave Joseph means? Savior of the world. Is that crazy? Savior of the world. Pharaoh, it's not a godly man. This is not a man. How? He's like, you have been brought in for this. You have been brought in to be the savior of the world. Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, Zaphnath Panea, savior of the age, savior of the world, giver of the nourishment of life, prince of the life of the age, revealer of a secret, the concealed treasure and treasury of the glory. Now, so let me tell you, this is what Pharaoh named him in Egyptian. He renamed him. And I'm telling you, when God is speaking a word to us, this is why I'm like, Lord, where are we going? Why are you? I know there's so many things God has been speaking. And we only have one more week together with House of Joseph. So I don't know if I'm supposed to write all this stuff. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it because it's we haven't even tapped all of it. Haven't even tapped the surface of it, but yeah, God is saying, but I need to prepare you to become the people that you're to become. I need to prepare you for the famine that's coming because this is the thing. This famine that's coming may not look like a famine. Did you hear me? This famine out of Amos, I believe it's 811. Kim can double check that. We, we, the Lord spoke this word. Go back and hear it. I'm sure it's on, uh, yes, it's on YouTube still that a famine was coming. God began to give me a word that a famine, and I believe it's already begun because I'm seeing this fig leaf reality, this fig leaf covering, this false front. If I just do this and I do that. And so, and people are looking for fig leaves when we need Christ and a transforming relationship with Christ, something that causes you to no longer be on drugs. Listen, Jesus has come into my life and he has systematically systematically delivered me, freed me, healed me. Okay. It's still going on all these years. Listen, this is the intimate connection with Jesus. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from systems. Though I can learn from men and women of God, I can use systems as tools. Listen, but they are just that tools, the connected life. Adam knew Eve and produced a child. We need to know Christ and it will produce the fruit of that union. Freedom, hope, transformation, transformation. Mm-hmm. All right, 44. So Joseph went 40, 45. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, so basically as he predicted from the dream, seven years of plenty, plenty seven years of famine. So he came up with a strategy. We're going to collect all the grain. We're going to be prepared. Come on, be prepared. Can someone just get this strategy? Get prepared. Get the word in you. Read your Bible, read these stories, read your Bible. Not just, you know, listen, a Bible plan is fine. Read that, do that. But I'm telling you, go in and read these stories, these clusters, like read about Joseph, read about Elisha, read about Elijah, read read about David. See, I'm telling you, because you're gonna need this in you. So when the famine comes, it'll be in you for the Holy Spirit to bring revelation to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't wait, because right now we're already at a critical time where we're being taught, but some of what we're being taught is fig leaf nature. Again, I am not identifying any specific leaders. I'm just telling you, you need 
the word. You need Christ and the word. Get it in you so he can speak to you. The famine is coming. I just, I, I'm sorry, like I can't get, the famine is coming. It's been spoken of and it's coming. Here we see this again. Joseph's saying, prepare for it. So he's given him a strategy. Store up the grain, store up the word. Come on, store up the word of God in your heart. Store it up. Don't say sorry. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to stop right here, seriously. I said at the very beginning, this is a month of revealing secrets. If all y'all, you need to raise your hand so she could, she doesn't need to see this because she'd do it if nobody was understanding. But let me just tell you something. Is this not the word of the Lord? Raise your hand if you're hearing what is being said. Come on. This is the word of the Lord. This is it. This is everything. Nothing else. Like this is it. So figure out and ask Holy Spirit how, how he's speaking it to you and what that adjustment means. There's not a blockage. But there needs to be a sensitivity yeah. to the word that's being spoke and you need to make the adjustment. So whatever that means to you, take a hold of it. But do not apologize. Do not apologize, prophet of the Lord. Come on. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. it right here. That he's, reve he's the revealer of secrets. She just said it, that word, Amos 8, 11. That's what Joseph was. The revealer of the secrets. For what? Not for more money. For how to be prosperous and prosperity is not about the one thing it's about this he is the prosperity come on i mean this is like yeah. exploder head situation you know you just said it right there it's not about the money let me tell you but i will tell you this that this passage it goes on let me tell you this famine comes just as he saw that it would oh lord yeah okay we get to a point through this famine where it actually says and the money failed. So you know what? Some of you, and again, hear me. Do what God says to do. Do the businesses he says to do. Do the ministries that he says to do. I mean, be the ministries that he says to be. Like, don't just do the old way. The old way will not work in the famine. Do you hear me? The old way will not work in the famine. Some of you are wondering, like, why isn't this working out anymore? Why do I not feel settled here? Why do I feel rejected? Why do I feel like, because God's like, I'm trying to move you into, I'm trying to get you, like he had to get Joseph. We can all get on like this family. It was horrible. Yeah, whatever, but he needed to get there because a famine was coming. And you all needed to get to this place in life where you would hear the word of the Lord in preparation for the famine that's coming. I had a conversation with someone this week and we just talking about, I'm just gonna say it this way. Uh, for years, I said this to her. For years, I have invited people to church. I mean, come on, this what, come to church, you know, go to church. And I said, you know what? I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm at a place now where I look back and I had very little fruit. I'm not saying people didn't come. I'm just saying those same lives are not transformed because I was so busy inviting them to a church when I should have been being the church. I should have been had more time to invest in them. I don't care if it's a birthday party for my granddaughter. So my granddaughter knows you are valued. You are the, she comes in, let me tell you, for those who didn't see the pictures of the Hello Kitty party, she walked in like, this is me and all my kingdom and glory. Okay, because someone and a bunch of you who helped me made it happen. We need to be present with our family. We not just our family, that's just one example. Listen. Come on. Yesterday, we went to, you know, we had my friend's daughter here during the day, and she's here at the house, and then the other daughter is at her practice. And it's like, hey, we can finally go see her practice. Let's run over. Listen, and the Lord was showing me this is what I'm talking about being present in people's lives will have more impact because they will see your love, they will see your care, and they will listen to your words. So when you say, hey, hey, I, there's a problem. This isn't okay. They'll hear you instead of just, you know, just trying to get me to come, come on. No offense to any company, but I, you know, like, you know, just trying to sell me Amway, just trying to sell me Avon. You're just trying, this is how it's being received by the world. And if, if we're honest, we're relegating our authority. We are witnesses. We are the kingdom. Not trying to get everybody to a building. I'm not saying don't go to church and be encouraged and learn and, and be encouraged. That's what it's there for, for you to be encouraged. So you can go out and be the church. 
So you can go out. He sent them out. But a famine is coming, and I'm telling you, it's already here, and it's coming. Okay, wait a minute. Thank you, Kim, for telling me to stop saying sorry. This is the area where she knows this. I'm like, I say sorry because like I have the whatever. You can all leave whenever you want. You don't have to be here in the first place. So I got to remind myself. My responsibility is to say what he says, to say and leave it there. So, yeah. The other night when I was reading on Joseph again, and that's when this famine word came back to me. And he said, remember what I told you. Remember the famine is coming. And that's why now I'm raising up the Joseph company. I need a company of people who will be the revealer of secrets, who will have a granary, will be the ones who held, kept the grain of his word, my word in their hearts. And then they could then distribute it as people came. All right. Let's look at 55. Oh, no, no, no. I can't skip that. Sorry. <sighs> not sorry. I'm going to get a shirt. Sorry, not sorry. Isn't that? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Because I really don't mean sorry. I'm just like doing the, see, just doing the apologetic thing. We're going to stop apologizing. Come on. This ain't just for me. This is not, look, at. I see how God's like, let me stop apologizing. Stop it's apologizing. Like, they, they, you they, see the devil. Stop apologizing for calling people out. Stop apologizing for not being everywhere everyone thinks you need to be. Stop apologizing for not being who people think you ought to be. You are the house of jo Joseph. Come on. That'll be a good time to read it. I'm like, when will I read our main scripture here? How about right now? Because Joshua 17 17 says, and Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, you are a great people and have great power. You shall not have only one lot, but the mountain country shall be yours. Although it is wooded, you shall cut it down and to its farthest extent. It shall be yours, for you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots and is strong. And let me tell you something. We've got to get this in our heads. This is who we are. Don't apologize for it. The Lord told me this week. I said, Lord, what is this? I was agitated about something so agitated. I mean, granted, it was a little agitating and I spoke about it and then I walked away, but I was like eh, in my heart. I was just kinked in my heart to the point that I went to where I said, what is this? This kinkedness, this agitation of my spirit, Lord, is, am, I, am I in unforgiveness? Am I, what is this? I don't want it. I come before you. Literally, I literally did this. And he just showed me a, a picture of something. And he said, because you cannot unsee what you have seen. You see, you know, the devil is present. You know, listen, this group of people, we cannot be comfortable with this, with Satan. We cannot be comfortable with what the enemy's doing in our families and stop apologizing for it. I'm not going to apologize anymore for it. I don't know that I really was within my family. I'm always like, well, you know, but I think somewhere in my head, I'm still apologizing, but no more because we're the Josephs. And we're here for a purpose. Listen, now in the 47, now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city, the food of the fields, which surrounded them. So Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting for it was immeasurable. And to Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came, whom Aseneth, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. I want you to, this, this is key because we're going to, from going forward in the weeks to come, we're going to, you're going to hear this. We've already talked about this Manasseh and Ephraim. So you need to know these are his children. Listen, his children, this is a family. This is a person who went through pain. This is not like some like, you know, we look at stars or whatever. Some people get and they think they're not real. These are real people with real pain. But God did what he said he would do and he produced something in his life. This man had children. Firstborn was Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. The name Manasseh, that's what it means. God, you got me to this place. You got me through this. 
and you're you I forgot how painful it was like one day hey hear me one day the pain is going to end it doesn't mean you don't remember the story okay I have a lot of testimonies things I share with you guys that once upon a time they were too painful to say you know I, I'll never forget and and Charlie's allows me to say these things so I don't just throw, throw them out unlike for those of you who know the story of when he threw me under the bus about smoking and he said pray for Monica at the church and I was like, how dare you throw me under the bus 20 years ago? Okay, unlike that day, um, he does give me permission to say, but I'll never forget the, the day that I was able to share about him having had pornography issues. Let's just, let me just say it like, sorry. I'm like, ah, I don't even know how to say it. Cause I, you know, okay. I'll never forget the day I was able to share it with no sting. That moment. That moment, I knew, oh, thank you, Jesus. I will now use this as a weapon to help others. We overcame. You overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And you don't love your own life even under, uh, unto death. Like, I'm not ashamed. And he was okay. He's okay with that. Okay. But that was a big moment because prior to that, the pain, the humiliation, the, the lies, that had, like it had something to do with me instead of understanding the devil and his and bondage. But I'll, I'll never forget. And I'm telling you one day the pain will end. One day the pain will end. But when you tell that story and you will use it and it will, you will be, Jesus said, and you will be my witnesses. You will testify of what I have done. The freedom I have brought. Why? <laughs> Why? So others can be free. Come on. This is the vulnerability. This is the admitting. We're not perfect people. We're broken people. We're the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What does that mean? Come on, stop. We use that so religious. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Stop it. Come on, say so. I've been delivered from the pain and the shame of pornography. Hey, I've watched pornography. Come on, I've been redeemed from that. I've been redeemed from sexual perversion. I've been redeemed from addictive behaviors. I've been let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We need to get real. The scriptures need to become life so we can feed off of them and stop with the, <laughs> stop with the fig leaves. Come on, off with my fig leaves. I feel like I'm just like, Phew. thank God I have a covering that God has made. So I'm not standing before you naked and ashamed and Lord God help me because let me tell you, Jesus, you are Lord and you are amazing. Let me tell you, let's look at something else here. Revelation three. Verse 14. This is what God's trying to get to us. So once we get this, let me tell you, once we get it, remember, I, I could be um, wrong on this quoting where, but Kim will check, checkmate me. Uh, Moses said, the secret things belong to the Lord, but those things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. I want to say Deuteronomy 20, 20, 29, 29, but I'm not positive. Um, Though the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things revealed. So he reveals, the Bible also says that the, he, God reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Okay. So listen, he reveals secrets. And once we have them, listen, they belong to us and our children. It's a promise. Your kids. Great. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Yes. Okay. He's revealing this secret the strategy of the enemy to keep, to get us to die during the famine, to get us to languish during the famine. And some of you have been pushed out of old systems and old ways and the things that used to work for you. Anybody feel like your old patterns don't work for you anymore? Like, hey, I used to do this. And when I would do this, then I would really hear from God. Or uh, I used to feel so much more satisfaction out of it. So you, you're kind of thinking something else is going on, but I'm here to tell you, he's pushing you out so he can get you ready to be, to really to be a savior of the age. Do, do you hear me? Because when we go back to the story of Joseph, or when you go back to the story of Joseph and read it, you'll see that as he ends up saying to his brothers, listen, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good 
that many would be saved. Your rejection, I declare to you that your betrayal, the betrayal, your husband betraying you and leaving your family, hear me, someone, your, the betrayal of your spouse that left you desolate and alone and broken. God, the enemy meant it for evil, but God says, but I have meant it for good that many would be saved. Oh, oh, what the enemy meant for evil, God will use for good. Joseph says this to them. See, because your, your eyes are going to be open. Come on, the rejection, the not fitting in, the not fitting in, not being the one they looked at. Maybe you used to fit in. All of a sudden, you, you, like, you're not needed anymore. You feel hurt. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your church. I don't know what's going on around you, but you're like, man, that old friend, why, why isn't this relationship working anymore? God's like, listen to me. Don't hold it against them. Don't take it personal. I'm trying to get you somewhere because a famine is coming and I need me some Joseph's. Be, and you're thinking, yeah, but how am I going to really affect many? Because I'm just here. Listen, I, I'm asking the same questions. I'm like, Lord, I have exited so many things and pulled back for like this three years. I know you guys are like, what are you talking about? We've been here. Okay, you, I've been here with you guys, but I pulled back from pretty much everything else because I knew God was saying, prepare. Okay, prepare. All right, Revelation 3, 14. And the angel, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right. Now this is in red letters in case you're not looking at a Bible with red letters. This is Jesus speaking. These things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold or cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Can we just pause a second and realize he's talking to believers. He's talking to a church. He's talking to, at the time to this, this message was going to a, re a church in the region, the region of Laodicea. But this is the word of God. And he is speaking to a group of people within the church, within the church of Jesus Christ. I don't believe that's like one full locale. I think it's people within a lot of churches. Do you hear me? This isn't like one pastor and their people. This is a group of people who think I've got it, who think I'm covered, who think I'm in relationship with Jesus. But what they have is a false gospel. They have the appearance. They say, I'm good. I'm rich. I have become wealthy. I have need of nothing. I don't believe that rich, by the way, rich, rich and wealthy is just money. I think that in the spirit, they feel like, oh, I'm good. Like I, I, I go to, I have the Bible. I have a good pastor. I do this. I take OSL. I, I, you know, all the things I, I serve on a team. Cause you know, you can do all those things and be poor as dirt, but you feel like, no, I got my checklist. I do all these things. I mean, I'm at, I'm at the church every day of the week. Hear me on this wealth factor and this rich. You think I'm rich and wealthy. I don't think this is money, although it, it can have that too, but I'm telling you. Oh, Lord, help me. And have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched. You don't know. He didn't say, you're, hey, you're wretched. No, you don't know that you're wretched. You're, he's talking to church people. Are you horrified? Please, someone tell me. Because what if that's me? Does anyone, I mean, do you read this stuff and do that? Let me tell you. God, help me. I come before him and say, Lord, they don't know. So it could be me. You know, every time I come to him with these kind of things, which I do every time I read them, you know, he says, the fact that you're asking is your evidence you're okay. Come on, keep, always ask, never assume. Always come to me with it. Never assume. 
50 years deep, don't assume. I know some people tell you, come on, 30 years later, you should know. No, 30 years later, you should know that you better keep going to him to always check. I know some people don't like that because the faith movement, which I'm a part of, will say, well, no, 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 you just say, so. mm -mm. no, 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 I don't just say nothing Jesus didn't tell me. So shall his word be that goes forth from his mouth, not off his pages. Don't, we can't go there yet because the scriptures aren't going to save you. There's the heretic thing. Okay, they may burn me at the stake. Listen, the scriptures are not going to save you. You need the scriptures because in them, you will find him. But you got to find him. You could have them and not have found him. We saw that with the Pharisees, Sadducees. The Bible says that the, the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Without the spirit, the scriptures will do nothing. We see the crusades. Go back and look at history. So many horrible things done in the name of religion. Better check yourself and make sure you understand that the religion itself has not had a good track record. All right. Don't even know it. Miserable. Poor, blind and naked. 18, but he gives, he's so precious. He's speaking to you. He's saying, okay, I got something for you though. I counsel you. Jesus is counseling you, not me. Okay, not Paul, not Peter, not Kim, not Monica, not your pastor. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Jesus is saying, you hear me, I'll come in and dine with you right now. He wants to come in and sit with you. He wants to come in and be in your, in your life. Revelation 3, 14 through. He wants to sit with you. He wants to be with you. This is what a relationship looks like. This is how you know. Am I just doing religion? Or am I having relationship? Can I just be doing my dishes? Not that I've done them recently. Charlie's going dishes, really, because he's been... <laughs> Can I be laying in my bed? Can I be playing a game with my kids? And just, I mean, I'm talking to him. He's dining with me. He's living with me. He's talking to me through everything. This is what he wants. I'm not talking about a new religious setting. Say, oh, go, got to do this. Got to get away for three days. Listen, that's great when you can do that. But that's not, that's not him coming in and dining with you, him and his father. And if you can overcome all that like religious way this needs to look and this then he'll cause you to sit in heavenly places with him. Not, not one day, listen. He who overcomes will sit with me in my father's throne, even as I overcame and sat in my father's throne. Listen, I'm talking about now. I'm talking about come up, get all that dealt with, and you will sit with him. And this is where the strength and the power will come from. And this, 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 this conversation that we're having, it's interesting because it doesn't feel like it's packed full of power. It doesn't sound like it. I, I know Kim, <laughs> Kim's all, yes, it does. <laughs> I, I'm talking about in terms of the emotional charge of it all. But I hear the Lord saying, that doesn't come unless you come through the door. You got to come through the door. Jesus laid down his life, humbled himself unto death, died. And came forth in resurrection power. You want resurrection power, then you're going to have to lay some things down because that stuff doesn't fit through this door. Your pride, your version of success. I tell you, God is not trying to, and I'm not trying, I'm not here to help you become successful. I don't know how to make you become successful in terms of the world. I am not successful in terms of the world, nor do I want to be. I want to know him and to love him and to divide up the inheritance that God has 
for those that he brings to me, not to everyone, not to everyone. I want my tribe to find me. And I want to be like Joseph or Joshua who went in and got his territory and fought to divide up their inheritance for them too. I want yours is not mine, though they may overlap. But I'm not calling you all here. Come on. I'm not calling you all here to help me build a kingdom. That is the world's method with a, with a, with a Jesus banner, a bumper sticker on top. We have got to discern the spirit. We've got to test the spirit. I want you to be all that you ought to be. And I really want to read about this stuff with you. But there's no way I can keep going here. But Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the new ideas that you've given to me of how to bring this about. I thank you that you're raising people up to fulfill their destiny. I thank you that you're causing us to shed the antichrist spirit and mindsets. You're causing us to shed the fig leaf mentality, just to put something on the top to make it look good, it, to put a coat of paint on the house to make it look good, but, you, but yet it's in ruins inside. Haggai talks about the, is it time for you to build your paneled houses? But yet my temple lies in ruins. And so often we've heard this taught as like, hey, you're building your own life at home. You're worried about that. But, and you need to get to the church house and help us build that. Okay, that's fine. But I hear the Lord saying, no, no, no. Know ye not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you're busy making everything look good on the outside. You're busy working on your job life. You're busy working on your you know, body and your health. And all those things are good because God is recovering us in every way. But he's like, but yet the temple where I dwell inside is in ruins. And he's knocking at that door saying, come on, I want to. I want to clean the place up. He's not asking you to build it. He's saying, I'll give you the strategy. I will come in and dine with you. And I believe that when he does that, when he comes in and dines with you, this is what happens for me. Comes in and he begins to dwell with me and talk to me. And it's almost like I don't notice that he's cleaning the place up. He's like the friend, like Kim, when she'll come over, like she, by the time she leaves, she like does all this stuff. And it's like, oh, wait, my dishes are clean. And she reorganized my shelf and like what? And she's like, okay, bye. And it's like, wait, left it better than when she came. Jesus does that when he wants to come in and dine with you, connect with you, talk to you. And when you won't even realize it by the time you're done, things are in order. Things are in order. God is trying to organize our life, setting up provisions for us so that we indeed can be the house of Joseph in the time of famine and then in the time of conquest, come on, we are going to, I hear the Lord saying there's a, sign, there's a parallel plane coming. The famine is here and it's going to get worse. But you are going to have the word of God stored up and the spirit of God to distribute it to those around you. You are the church and we're coming in today's where you're going to see that your best effectiveness for the people around you is spending time with them, talking with them sharing with them, being vulnerable about your past struggles and what God has done for you, witnessing what Jesus said. That is going to be attractive to people. They're going to step into that and they're going to begin to get free as well. Become a witness, but it's going to require vulnerability. It's going to require you sharing the stories of where you've come from to where God has taken you and not being ashamed. So let him teach you how to do that. Lord, I thank you that these are your people and you are raising up a company of Josephs that will be saviors, if you will, because Christ in them is the hope of glory. The spirit of the living God, the, the temple within them is going to be rebuilt and that you're going to live and dwell from this place, from these cracked pot vessels, each one of us. And you're going to shine so bright through them. While the world gets darker, they get brighter from within. So I ask that you would Help us, Lord, to individually know what that looks for. Take off the fig, repent for the fig leaf, repent for thinking I've got it all together because I, whatever it is that you think is your reason. Christ alone, the hope of glory, the blood of Jesus is the only covering that will cover you for eternity. So Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen.
and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, like I said at the beginning, we're like bookends, um, was talking about where we are on the Hebraic calendar, which we are in the second month of IR, which is associated, every month is associated with tribe, with a tribe, is that on his dream? And this year, it's just, this month is associated with the Issachar, and I'm just going to end with this. Issachar had a function, which is why this month and this time and this season is exactly all the things that he just revealed through uh, the words that Monica brought. So, Issachar was uh, the ninth son of Jacob, and Issachar was blessed by Jacob, saying that he was a man of strength who would not hold back. He would not hold back from hard work to establish a secure place to rest. Moses blessed Issachar and Zebulon, okay, they were brothers, together by saying that Zebulon would go out and Issachar would remain at home. But both together would call the peoples to the mountain to offer righteous sacrifices. They would also draw out the abundance of the sea and the hidden treasures of the sand. Today, we have received the hidden treasures, like I said at the very beginning, knowing the times and the seasons. Issachar understood the times and the seasons and knew what Israel should do. Israel is a type of us. Put your name in there. I will know what to do. This is the kind of people that God is raising up in this day. He's looking for prophetic people who can understand the times. Just like Monica said, a famine is coming. Not go and get all the things and, you know, make your, do all these things to make yourself be better. But no, no, no. A famine is coming. And what are we going to do? What are you going to do? He wants us to be like the tribe of Issachar. And I declare that you shall be, you shall be a great people. You shall move with great power. Just like this house of Joseph that we are understanding. Joseph fits right on in here, right? Do you see how all the things, like she said, it's a parallel plane. And so I just declare over you, the great thing about tribe, and she's saying, oh, I wish we could do da, 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 all the, read all this. Guess what? The great thing about tribes, we're not going nowhere. So you know what? He can bring whatever word he wants to bring, whenever he wants to bring it, however he wants to organize it. So we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm confident. Don't you worry. But this week, moving from this spot, don't just move from this spot and just, you know, toodle along. I won't, I know you won't. Hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying spending time spending time if you're doing everything how you used to do it i'm telling you you're missing something so i believe we will not miss it so praise the lord i'll be on prayer this week every night i've been having we've been having like 20 people and i know a lot of people listen on the playback we we ruminate over these things okay that we learn and we pray over our america over our states over our cities our neighborhoods our families we pray so join us if you if you can on the playback or on uh, weeknights in the evenings i always post beforehand if you have your notifications on you'll hear that prayer is going to be at this time you can jump on if you want to watch later totally fine and not second string okay it's all it doesn't matter i don't care i could care less if nobody was there i know i'm doing what god says to do we're providing a place for us to to be this but can't be your only place but it's a place to add to so praise the lord i believe we have just been literally poured into and stirred up to walk in a different way cause some things you know you're not going to have a blockage of understanding you're going to be sensitive to the things of the lord and make those adjustments as necessary and move forward this week well praise the lord praise the lord this literally i don't know this might be i don't know if i can you can't do favorites but this right here i'm telling you it's a keystone memorial stone we must and if you get a chance go back and listen to that amos 8 11 we'll be reviewing it on prayer as well but it's going to be on YouTube, Monica Stenberg one, you can look up our past um, YouTube teachings or on YouTube with the teachings from tribe. All right. Love you all so much. We have our dates for Israel. Does anybody want to know for 2024? Can I say, I didn't even ask her, but oh, well today our date. Can I say? Uh, yes. I, I, I don't know. I made a little adjustment. Did I give you the second one? It's it's you might have, I might have. What dates do you have? I have 4 through 14. No, April 2nd through 12th. They just made a little adjustment to me. Oh, they changed us back to what we were. Because 
we wanted to avoid that issue in Jerusalem with the Sabbath. So, well, praise the Lord. Put April, it on your calendars, 2024, yeah. April 2nd through the 12th. The 12th, and we'll have the, you know, the all the details and the website soon. They're working on getting it together. And we are also uh, waiting to hear back on a tour to the uh, Revelation churches, the whole yes. area there through Turkey, different, you know, it'll also be it's in got, 2024, but so there's, but there's two trips time. coming up. We'll be giving you those dates. Mark your calendars, get with the Lord, ask him what places you should be, and he will get you there. Praise the Lord. The whole All right. Way. That's right. It'll be here for yeah. you now. Praise the Lord. All right. Celebrating your 30th birthday in Israel. Why not? I celebrate. You should celebrate yours. <laughs> I've celebrated a birthday there too. Come on, Sarah. Yep. Jump Come on, in we all yep. should. Praise yep. the Lord. All right. Love you, tribe. Have an amazing uh, rest of your weekend as you are gathering in your house churches, as you are being among your family, as you are where God says to be. Jesus is Lord, and we'll see you next Saturday. Love you all.